Well, we'll just tell your mother that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. As American Pie hits its 25th anniversary, we're here to see if the iconic teen comedy still holds up today. Over the years, there's been increasing chatter, particularly from Gen Z and younger audiences, who criticize the film for being sexist and offensive. So we brought together three millennials and three Gen Zers to watch or rewatch the film to determine whether American Pie remains relevant and enjoyable today, or if it should be left in the past. <laughs> Excuse me? American Pie follows the humorous and often awkward journey of four high school friends as they navigate the complexities of teenage life and their quest to lose their virginity before graduation. Here are the key players. Jim. <laughs> That's great. Kevin. I'm pretty sure that I've given her a... No, you have Oz. Suck me, beautiful. What did you just say? Finch. Would you object if I said that you were quite striking? And lastly, Stifler. Yeah! Let's jump in and see if this classic teen comedy can still resonate with audiences in today's world. Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Sure. Whatever you want. Is it still funny? These days with like comedies and stuff, it's like in your face. And I feel like a lot of it was like hidden behind like innuendos and you know, so it was like, it wasn't that bad. No, I agree actually. I thought it was surprisingly like tame in a lot of ways. What exactly does third base feel like? Like warm apple pie. It's good to see like a comedy movie being treated like a regular movie instead of like an improv exercise. I took some MILF. What the hell is that? M-I-L-F. Mom, I'd like to fuck. Is this the first place that they introduced like that word or that acronym, whatever it is? I, I could be wrong, but I think it was local or like semi underground slang that they just were like, put it on the main stage. I sat up and was like, oh my God, is that the origin point? Like that's the moment when that became like the thing. It does remind me of like how funny it is, like how how simple back then you had to like spell it out. You couldn't just use a piece of slang. You had to define the slang in the scene itself. What's my name? Say my name, bitch. Michelle, Michelle. It sets up like a good era that we had after this with The Office and all the like kind of cringe comedy. I was like, they did a pretty good job here. Were you shocked? I think drinking the jizz kind of shocked me a little bit. That shocked everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I saw him like, you know, in the club and I was like, oh, but then he left the yeah. club. And I was like, oh no. Oh, no, no, no. And then his friend made fun of him right after, as he's like puking over the toilet, his friend's yeah. like, Hey, Stifler, <laughs> how's the pale ale? <laughs> you. I'm like, oh, so you knew what he drank. I thought it fit well into like the 90s, sort of like late 90s, early 2000s, like homophobia. Strangely enough, when he was like, yo, that's so gay, I like pulled, I was like, that's coming. Like he's gonna say it. And it was still shocking. I was just uh, walking by mm. your, uh, your room and, uh, and you, you know, I was thinking, uh, boy, it's been a long time since we've had the little father-son uh, uh, chat. I had a very similar um, birds and the bees talk with my dad where it was like way too late. Like I was in high school yeah. and it's like, well, so we have to talk about whatever. And I was like, oh my God, please, no. I loved it. I thought it was so sweet. And like, this, here's this dad like trying to like do right by his teenage son. Well, that was a fun day, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Jim, I wanna talk about masturbation. Yeah, he was definitely my favorite part of the movie. Like as a parent, you're like, I don't wanna have this conversation. <laughs> like I don't wanna be here just as much as you don't wanna be here, so. Obviously his intentions are like so pure, but I love his method of like, he's just, flipping through the book and explaining what each picture is as if that's like <laughs> explaining him anything. Yeah, that was a weird method, but it, I guess it, you know, did the job. <laughs> the webcam scene sucks like all the time. <laughs> also, it got her deported. It got her deported. They, they, I like, never remembered that. I mean, honestly, I would leave the country too, so. <laughs> no one else has any consequences, but she gets deported. <laughs> she just starts masturbating in this dude's bedroom out of nowhere. Go over there and ask her if she needs an extra hand. Is that why they made her like this exotic girl who's like not from America, like she's from Europe. So like, obviously she's gonna just masturbate in someone's bedroom. Like, I wonder if that's why they made her. It's like, oh, they're, they're more open. They're European. Oh, yeah. Oops. When that happened, 
like during that scene and Stifler slaps her or whatever, um, my husband like reeled from it. He's like, ooh, that, that's not a good look. <laughs> not a good look. And I was like, oh, okay. It was interesting to see him kind of react that way. I mean, that like hasn't happened, but I've had guys like, you know, put their hand on like your lower back to like move yeah. past you. And it's like, come on, like, I just don't do that. Like, don't just touch me without, you know, consent or like ask me if it's okay yeah no that's pretty bad it was like that when i was growing up and it was just like i don't know it made me like slightly traumatized by being touched so i was like never the one that was like no i don't give hugs like i don't do any of that <laughs> you know what i don't know if i want to be doing this relax take it slow and let the good times roll Okay. Yeah, so that scene made me mad. <laughs> Same. It made me very, feel very tense. Like, I was super uncomfortable. I mean, I think it was appropriate to, like, have in the movie, obviously, because it happens all the time. Okay, was I the only person that thought that she was going to be, like, too young when she first came in? Like, I don't know why. Because he's look like, this dude obviously looks like he's, like, 30. And there was just something about, like, them two coming into the room together and then her being, like, oh, there's so many cool people here. I was, like... Oh my god, she better not be in high school. And then I was like, oh, they're both supposed to be in high school. Never mind. Is there still the same pressure on teens to be sexually active? The same pressure I feel like still existed. I remember feeling it from as early as being like 13 years old. Just kind of crazy because you think about like 13, you're a fucking child. You don't know any better as a kid. You're just like, oh, well, I guess that I, I need to be doing this and like need to get rid of this as soon as possible. Otherwise, I'm like less valuable. You know, I put in months of quality time with Vicky. Sherman meets a chick for one night and scores. This is just wrong. You know, we're all gonna go to college as virgins. You realize this, right? This idea of being ahead versus being behind and that it has something to do with like how cool you are, how mature you are. And really, you're all just kids trying to like scramble for some sort of identity or meaning or something. I'll look for you in the no fucking section. <laughs> I mean, I definitely lied in high school to make myself feel like, oh, I'm more accomplished or I'm on the same level as my friends. Definitely. I was the prude in my friend group. So I thought sex was like taboo and like a bad thing. And like, you shouldn't do it. It took me like years to be like, well, it's not bad. It's a natural thing. Even when I did eventually lose it, um, it was with my boyfriend who is my husband now. And we had been like dating for over a year. Like I was 20, I was had my own job. Like, and it still felt like I was doing a bad thing. Yeah, like the concept of like virginity for women, especially and how it's like seen as like pure thing that you're supposed to like hold on to and cherish when it's like not that big of a deal, honestly. Like it's, it's made to put women in one box and then men in, a, in another box. And I feel like growing up for me, especially like being like religious a little bit growing up too. Like I had to deal with like God and like how he would see me if I was like having sex and not married or like underage and all of that. So like having to like unlearn that and like unpack that as an adult has been quite a journey. Yeah. We're gonna have sex when he's ready and I'm ready. It's gotta be completely perfect. I want the right time, the right moment, the right place. I wonder if like movies have mostly played a part in like why when we're growing up, we think it's gonna be perfect first time which like makes no sense i do remember thinking like thinking of it in terms of like social traction like the girls who were popular and going to parties and sort of like making those moves that you're supposed to want to make in high school you're on the sidelines and looking in on it and being like well that's something that i don't think i want and i wouldn't do but like maybe there's something wrong with me that i'm not doing those things it was just kind of assumed that after a certain period of time oh you've been dating a year you're obviously sleeping Together, you know, like something like that. So there was always like, oh, well, how long have you been dating? Oh, okay, then this is where you're at. Do you love her? Um, you know what? Y you can't really ask me that. Well, if you want to get her in the sack, I mean, just tell her you love her. That just reminded me of like, like in high school, it was like, oh, if you've been dating past like, you know, four or five months, like you start saying I love you to each other and stuff. But it's like, oh. you don't know what that is. Or that after you love, after you say I love you, like that's when you can start sleeping together, right? Like, the yeah. I love you, yeah. The I love you is the first step to having sex. And then it's like, okay, well, we love each other and that's what people do. So we might as well have sex. I guess that just leaves Jim trailing. <laughs> ah, Jimbo. Better sack up, buddy. Yeah, I know I'm working on it, all right? I think even the concept of like guys putting so much pressure on needing to lose it comes from how perceived hard it is to do it when you're like that age. How do you think it influenced other movies and TV shows? 
I mean, this walked so Euphoria could run, right? And boy, did they run so fast. They sprinted. You thought we were sexualizing high schoolers before. I have never, ever been happier. On a positive note, though, like, it is good for this kind of stuff to get people to talk about normalizing, like, sexuality, masturbation, all that kind of stuff. It was cool that even throughout the process of this movie, it was like, no, 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 women do that too. You don't have people on a live journal, on a blog or on Reddit, like talking about their experiences where a boy could read that and go, oh, so that's how women think or what, you know what I mean? Things like this were kind of a good way of, of kind of trying to level the playing field, which I thought was cool. I could come by your house afterwards. I could change clothes at your place. Uh, yeah. I was so surprised for a movie that came out in 1999. All of the women were in power at the end. Like every single one of the sex scenes, it's it's like their choice. The nerdy girl is the one that's like, oh, no, 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 you were an easy target. Tara Reid's character who wants her boyfriend to say I love you realizes she doesn't care about that and just wants to like have it one session. Like every single person, even Jennifer Coolidge, the MILF, is like, oh, are you trying to seduce me? Like, every person is like the one putting it on the table first. For a 1999 movie, like, that's huge. Yeah, no, that surprised me. Because going in, I thought it was just going to be like these four boys that were like, ah, oh, I'm going to get laid. But instead, it was like all these girls being like, no, we want sex too. <laughs> yeah, I also like the part where he gets so frustrated with his guy friends because they're like, come on, it's prom. Like, we're, we made a pact. We're going to do this, which is so dumb. I am so sick and tired of all this bullshit pressure. I mean, I, I've never even had sex and already I can't stand it. And I'm not going to stand around here busting my balls over something that, quite frankly, isn't that damn important. After that, I literally, I was like, good job. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Would you recommend it? I thought it was going to be a lot more cringy than like it was, but it was, I don't know, there were like some genuine laughs in there. I loved it still. It was a lot less like shocking than I remember it being, but I did still find most of it funny. Yeah, it, it aged way better than I thought it was going to. It definitely felt like a time capsule. Like it felt like looking back, like, oh, this was 1999. I feel like you have to be like in the mood for the movie. Yeah, I'd recommend it for like people who maybe like haven't seen it, like 20s, like around my age. I definitely would recommend it. I would not recommend it to my own children who are teenagers. It would be more like seniors and up maybe. Maybe I would recommend it because like people have this like idea that we looked a lot cooler than we did in the 90s. He has his hair cropped way up too high. He's got like button down kind of like thin flannel over a t-shirt. Like everyone is dressed like not cool. You know what I mean? It almost feels like it's set up to be a like raunchy comedy, but then it ends up having a lot more like heart. The point is that they are sexist losers because they're kids and they don't know any better. And then they kind of learn a little <laughs> by the end of it. These guys are like high schoolers. So they're brought up around like what they're raised with. Well, they're just like super immature, which I feel like I don't think that means they don't deserve female attention. I just think like they just have to work for it a little bit, which they do. I watched this as a teenager, right? And so I saw so much more to this movie this time around than I did the last time because there's only certain things you pick out and it's like the big shocking things that you remember. I can see guys that are probably too young watching this movie and not getting like that they kind of change or like figure stuff out and that's what lets them to like have consensual sex. Maybe a parent should like really make sure that they understand like consent. Yeah, like maybe be there to point out the, some of those lessons that were obviously in the movie, but maybe they didn't pay attention to. I was used. Cool. After 25 years, it looks like American Pie gets the stamp of approval from our millennial and Gen Z reactors, with caution, of course. Not everything aged well, but the film remains highly entertaining, laughable, and is a great time capsule for the culture of the late 90s and early 2000s. How do you feel about the movie? Let us know in the comments below if you think American Pie still holds up and why or why not. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to Your Tango for more.